I'm always making these YouTube videos on this, that, and the other thing. And I thought, you know what, I'll just do one real quick of the proper way to tow a motorcycle. Um, what I'm using is a uh, 5x8 trailer that I bought. You can buy them at Lowe's. They're not expensive. They're like 600 bucks. Uh, mine had wooden planks on it when I bought it because I bought it used. I replaced a couple of the planks because they needed it. Um, and then basically what I had to do in the back is get a, a for my motorhome anyway, get a, something that dropped it five inches, about five, six inches was good for me. Um, originally it was more straight and the trailer was way on more of a tilt than I wanted, which is not good. Uh, make sure you always have a spare. This has got, uh, if you don't have your trailer doesn't have it, you can buy one, a little attachment kit and get yourself a wheel. This wheel I bought $100 or so at Lowe's. It came with the wheel and rim and everything. Um, the reason it's brand new is because I had a blowout when I was heading down to Florida. And thankfully, I was in the middle of North Carolina somewhere or something. Uh, someone flagged me down, hey dude. So I ended up uh, getting another wheel. And uh, so as soon as I had that blowout, I just switched it and I made sure that I got myself another wheel just in case that happens again. So don't forget to have a spare like this. It's smart to have. Another thing that's real smart to have for a trailer is this deal right here, which just rotates down and jacks to lift the tongue up. So when you want to uh, disconnect your trailer, and if you're not the strongest guy in the world or don't want to mess with that, it is a lifesaver. It's wonderful to have that. So you can just like crank it and it picks right up off the hitch. Now, as far as the bike itself, I will say as far as the trailer too, um, I was having issues with the old LED light, with the old lights, they're like bulbs. I bought brand new LED lights for the rear, which work wonderful. And they're like 30 bucks at AutoZone. Or O'Reilly's, one of those two. Um, so full LED kit, 30 or 40 bucks. And uh, so much brighter, you're not gonna mess with bulbs. I recommend that, make sure your lights work. Um, yeah, you gotta make sure you have a, a, a um, plate, which of course I do on it. And then um, when you buy a trailer, I did not know this when buying trailers. I thought, oh, you just buy a trailer and you don't need a title for it. No, you do need a title for it. Because I bought a trailer and I come to find out the trailer was stolen and I had to show up to the cop shop and they did an inspection and they took it from me. Apparently they can steal it and auction it off and just keep the profits for themselves, which is a load of crap. So, <laughs> you know, this one actually looks like it was has a uh, new VIN stamped in it. So it's one of those you wonder if it was stolen at one point and they stamped, put a new VIN on it. But when I bought it, it had the VIN and it had the proper paperwork. So at least when I bought it, it was legal. Whether or not it was at some point, I'm not sure. First thing you wanna do though, when you are gonna use this for a bike, is get yourself a wheel chalk. You see I installed and mounted a wheel chalk here. And this is a must have if you don't, for moving bikes because it keeps your bike upright no matter what and uh, you know I'll show you how a thing is get strapped down and stuff in a minute but uh, buy one of these wheel chocks they have them at like Harbor Freight I think they're like 50 bucks and you know mount it to the boards it's another reason to have the boards instead of just the mesh underneath which is what it originally had because then you can mount that pretty sturdy on there there are these eye hooks here for mounting but honestly I don't trust them I don't I mean, it is solid, I'm sure it's fine. It does go through the frame of the of, of this, you know, it goes up underneath. So you can see, it goes up underneath there. So I'm sure it's fine to use, but I feel more comfortable using this. And, and then it puts this more on the corners, pulls it down the corners better. So I just use the trailer itself. Now, what you do need as well are these. These are called Canyon Dancers. And especially if you have a sport bike, you need these. Because what will happen is you'll attach to up here somewhere, and then the strap will come down here, and it'll ride on the plastic. It'll scratch up your plastic, it'll crack your plastic. There's no good way to really get underneath. Even underneath here, if you mount it under here, you're gonna be pushing on the plastic here. So the only real good way you're gonna be able to mount this thing is by using these. And basically, what they are, I'm doing this while holding the phone, you have put one over the handlebar there and you come over here and one over the 
handlebar here, tighten that up, and then this basically gets attached to your ratchet straps. So you get your ratchet straps, and you attach on there to hold things down. So then as you start ratcheting, the wheel will fit firmly in place like it should up front. And you just want to keep doing this so your nose comes down. You want everything to be in compression. So well, make sure with your bike, like mine has this fairing right here, and it does clear this area, but it's something to keep an eye on because it doesn't clear it by much, and I don't want to break that plastic if I can help it. But it does seem to work fine. You can see I scrunched that uh, front nose down, kind of leaning to one side here, so I need to tighten up the other side. Kind of do one side then the other. I think the other side's a little too tight, so I'm going to loosen that up a little. For the back, what I've found is you do not want to use any of these pieces here. Your, uh, that people stand on that's actually made out of aluminum and it's not very sturdy it can easily break your these pieces here they're not that rigid so what I do is I take my hook here I put it right in the frame right there and I don't tighten up the rear nearly as much as the front it's just kind of an extra protection in case one of the fronts were to break loose or something um, of course being the fact it's in a wheel chalk it be fine anyway but uh, I kind of put this on each side I don't snug it real tight but enough to hold it a little bit and then I use the uh, subframe finally make sure your bike when you're doing the front that everything is nice and the bike is pretty you know nice and upright if anything I like it to be a little bit to the um, left side just where the kickstand is I kind of leave the kickstand down you can bring it up it doesn't matter I feel better better leaving it down and last but not least is these straps make sure that these straps you know you get it all ratcheted up you think no big deal and these straps you know, straps can go flying and you know they'll get caught up in the wheels or something and you don't want that you can see what happened here is I didn't make sure this was tied like I have it now and it chewed up my uh, my strap here which is not that big a deal but it could be a lot worse deal if it ends up getting caught in the wheel or something and you know who knows snaps the strap or locks up the wheel or just want to make sure you're loose straps like you can see right here boom loose straps see I'm gonna take that and just tie that up out of the way so that that can't get caught up under anything so, and that's it boys and girls hope you learned something not least you got to give it a little shaky shake yeah that's that's solid it ain't going nowhere